Hey, if you're creating any content online, doesn't matter if it's on a blog or a podcast or a video channel, or maybe even on social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, you need to focus on having a great about or bio section. It's really important you nail this down because a lot of people go to that to understand whether or not they should continue to follow and consume your content. So we're gonna work in this video through five different factors to make sure that you include on your about page exactly what it needs to, to get people to follow and subscribe to you. And if you haven't done this yet, you know, it's about time. It's, it's, about, it's about page time. It's about, pay, it's just stick around. You're gonna learn some stuff. All right, number one, the first thing you need to have is an amazing hook. What is a hook? A hook is a way to really capture a person's attention right then and there so that they'll be intrigued to keep reading down that page. If you don't have that great hook, you have all this amazing stuff after that. If you don't have the hook, they could leave and never come back. All right, so there's lots of ways to hook an audience. First way, questions. Ask questions where the answer will be, <laughs> where the answer will be a yes. Meaning like, are you somebody who blank? Do you typically feel blank when you blank. So really understanding the pains and problems of your audience in a way that when they answer these questions in their head, they're gonna be like, yeah, that's me. Uh-huh, yep, I do that. Okay, this might be a page that'll actually help me. So asking questions, great thing to do to start off your about page. Next, and this isn't really for social media because you don't have a lot of room usually, but if you are on your website and you wanna have a great hook, you can tell a story. So tell a great story right from the start, something that really resonates with that person. Again, making it relatable based on the pains and problems that they have. You wanna show that you understand exactly what this person is going through because like Jay Abraham says, if you can define the problem better than your target customer, they're gonna automatically assume that you have the solution. And you can do that by asking questions and having them say yes, or you can do it by telling a story where their story and your story have a match and intersection. Now don't ramble or go too long with a story. You wanna to get to the point really quick where a person can understand, oh, that's just like me. So don't ramble on and go too long, but telling a story is great because we as humans are just fine tuned to really pay attention when a person's telling us a story. All right, number three, you can create what's called an open loop. So this is really handy because people don't like when things aren't finished or complete. Now that's not to say you're never gonna finish or complete this open loop. I'll give you an example in just a second. But it is to say, okay, a person's gonna be interested and intrigued. Their curiosity meter is gonna go up and they're gonna be like, all right, I, I need to find out what's going on here. You can say things like, well, hey, I've discovered an amazing way to do X, Y, and Z. And before I give you all the information about how to do that, make sure you keep reading because I wanna tell you a little bit more about what you can get here. Now, there's a lot of other ways to create hooks and also ways to combine these kinds of things together to really reel a person in and have them continue to read on and subscribe and follow what you do. But as long as you have a hook, then that's a great start. So let's keep going with the next part of your about page or bio. All right, so the next section that you wanna make sure you include, let me erase this really quick, is you need to make sure you understand and the person who's there understands the benefits benefits, not the features, not here's what you're gonna get, but more so the why, because this is what really people want. The benefit is what a person will get if they stick around. And the best piece of advice I can give you is focus on the transformation. I love this word transformation. I use it whenever I create any sort of content, blog posts, podcast episodes, videos. I wanna understand, okay, where's a person at? but then how can I help them? The transformation is that thing on the other end of what it is you're offering, the outcome, if you will. Now, in terms of the transformation, it's just really important to note for the person who's on that page or reading that bio, well, what are they gonna get as a result of sticking around? And then by starting with the benefit, then you can add the features on after that. Hey, I'm gonna show you how to make more money, save more time and help more people too, and this is how I'm gonna do it. So we're kind of flipping the switch. A lot of people typically add the features first and then go into the benefits. But I love to just share the benefits first because then a person understands, well, okay, I'm gonna get this outcome. I don't really care how I get it. Well, obviously you do, but then you go into the how after that. So you kind of, it's kind of the Simon Sinek, right? Like start with why and then kind of pull out from there into the what and, and where. And finally, another really important factor related to the benefits and the features is making sure that you share for this person what makes you and the way that you teach these things different. There's a lot of people that likely wanna provide and do provide the same outcome and transformation to people. How are you gonna do it differently? That's really important to note as well. All right, next up, and this is really important, you wanna make sure that you show people some sort of 
proof. In sales, in trying to get anybody to subscribe, proof is a really important factor and having a person understand that, yeah, okay, I can trust this person. Proof used in this fashion because likely a person hasn't really gotten into your stuff yet at this point. Proof is kind of just part of the first impression that a person might have on your stuff. If they come across your stuff and they see that you've been featured on certain publications, if you have these accolades, if you have you know, awards as a result of what you've done, then they're gonna be more likely to dig deeper. Now, those forms of proof are important and they are helpful to share with others, but you can take this a step further by showing proof, if you have any, of how you've already helped other people too. So on your about page and even in your bio, you could perhaps pinpoint certain people or groups or companies that you've worked with that you've helped. Now there's lots of different ways to show proof. You can show proof in the form of videos. Videos are probably the most powerful form of uh, testimonials or if you have any uh, other people share kind of how you've helped them, that's great. If you're a speaker, perhaps it's great to have other conferences talk about how well you did on stage, that sort of thing. Videos are great. Our written testimonials are good as well. But I think to take that one step further, I would also include images. Anything to break up the text on that page, again, if it's on your website, makes a big difference and people can see you, people can see how you do what you do or what you've done for others and that's really important. All right, next up we have, and this is one thing that I have uh, really understood that works really well for me because I know I have a good one and that is a personal story. Now you might have told a story already like we talked about earlier, but this is where you get a little bit deeper about how you got to this point. Why are you the person who's writing this website? What is your mission? And I know, for example, I have a great personal story that really resonates with people getting laid off, starting a business, being successful after getting laid off and falling through a state of depression. It really resonates with people and a lot of people connect with that, but more than just the story and the outcome that comes along with it that's relatable, more so it just has a person on the other end realize that you are a real person too. And the thing is people wanna do business with other people, not websites, not profiles, not even companies, but people wanna do business with other people. When you can share your personal story, something that's completely unique to you, it's gonna help you stand out from everybody else out there who's just making noise along with you. If I were to offer one side tip, one piece of advice, it's to really nail this down. Practice it, share it on stage, write it a number of times, really hone in on how you can best tell your personal story because that's gonna be an amazing tool for you to build a relationship much quicker. All right, next let's talk about something really important that's tactical. It's gonna help you actually grow your business from your about page or your bio. And that is an opt-in form form, or it could be a link if it's on like social media. When a person's reading about you and they've gotten to the end of this thing and they're like, yes, I like this person, this person's speaking to me, I want more. This is the perfect opportunity to include an opt-in box on your website, on your about page. And a lot of people don't do this. I actually picked up this tip from Derek Halpern from Social Triggers who actually just emailed me one day and he said, Pat, you should have an opt-in box on your about page. I guarantee you it'll increase your subscribership. So I didn't have one, I put one on. I did have an email opt-in in the sidebar of my website at the time, but not directly at the bottom, a clear CTA call to action to get more email subscribers. And by just simply adding it in there, I increased my email subscription rate by 477% on that page alone. So. It does work and there's lots of different ways to do it. You can offer a lead magnet or some incentive to go along with it, which I would recommend. People don't want more emails. So don't just say like subscribe to get more emails or subscribe for my newsletter. That typically won't go over as well as if you had something that relates to them and their problems and pains and struggles that you can offer to them for exchange for that email address. Now, out of all these things, probably the best thing I can do to sum up what makes a successful about page is to make sure that you don't make it actually about you the entire time. Yes, your personal story will be in there and all those kinds of things. Your testimonials and all those things are in there, right? But it's mainly about the person reading the page and how you can best serve them. So I wanna put the ball in your court. I wanna ask you, how are you doing in each of these five realms on your about page, on your website, or perhaps the bios that you have here on YouTube or any other places that you have information about you online. If you cover these five things in there, especially the call to action at the end, it's going to help you grow your business, 
help more people and build a stronger relationship with those people who can then dive deeper into the content that you have to offer and help them with. So if you're up to the task, number one, hook me up with a thumbs up. But number two, also leave in the comment section below which one of these things was missing or maybe underutilized with what you have going on. Maybe it's all five, maybe you haven't even started an about page yet, in which case now you have a structure to make sure it's gonna be great. But of the five things, which one do you feel that you just needed a little bit more work on? I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy hearing that, well, they're not alone in this process. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching this. I hope you just crush it with your about page because it's truly gonna help you moving forward, especially when it comes to building those important relationships with your audience because of relationships are everything. So make sure you subscribe to the channel below, hashtag Team Flynn for the win, I appreciate you guys. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet, do so below, hit that notification bell so you know when new videos come out and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.